out. I got something in my eye. I don't get it. Didn't you whack the Vola and a bunch of gunners here? Where's all the bodies? Hey, what's that hanging over that workbench over there? That a brooch? As everyone knows, Copper, crystal, steel, and random.
What you got for me? Hey. Where at? <clears throat> that noose the brooch was hanging on wasn't an accident. It's a safe assumption they cleared any intel out of here already. But this just confirms my suspicions about what's going on. Let's get back to the sheriff by way of a stop at my room first. You're getting caught up in something old and bitter. You deserve an explanation. What, you dry? Cleo, don't worry. I only tell. Uh -huh. Sure. Let's take a look. A gun for it. Watch your ass around Cleo if you're in power armor. Literally, watch your ass. She likes to goose ya. And those pinchers of hers got some strength. Yeah? Some of the ghouls say Boston was improved by the bombs. Some of them aren't joking either. Hey. So, that explanation you wrote about the sheriff and the gunners, huh? Where to begin? You see. It got a history that is making this cistern incident a little more complicated than you might think. 
I know Babs mentioned what happened to the sheriff in Pennsylvania with the gunners a while back at dinner night. That's where it starts. But it doesn't end there. There was a little incident here in Diamond City the gunners perpetrated. The sheriff's response? We call that the message around here. The message in the FSD motto, Mite Nuntius, more specifically. It's a touchy subject around here, because the gunners killed so many citizens at Diamond City that day. What happened? That story about a squad going AWOL from the Brotherhood by stealing a couple of vertebrates in the middle of the night? All true. The four lieutenants are all that's left of them now that the years and the wasteland have taken their toll. They stole a fuck ton of plasma weapons and well over a dozen T-60s when they left. The same T-60s the department uses today. Gary was there too. He's a civilian, but they've looked out for him since Crenshaw found him starving to death in a subway station in the capital. After they left, they hooked up with the outcasts in the Allegheny Mountains and lived there in exchange for the vertebrates and plasma weapons. If you ain't heard that whole story, go talk to one of the lieutenants. They got this unwritten rule around here that you don't talk about battles and struggles you weren't there for. I'm about to break that rule, cause you're out here dodging bullets for this bad blood between us and the gunners. I don't care. I like being confused. Watch your ass around clear. Excuse me. So, that explanation you wrote about the sheriff and the gunners, huh? Where to begin? You see, mm -hmm. that's where it stopped. The sheriff, uh -huh. it's a touchy. What happened? That, uh -huh. The four, uh -huh. they stole a f Gary, uh -huh. after they left, if you ain't, uh -huh. they got this unwritten rule. Sure. I'm about to break that rule. Tell me the long version. The sheriff got a job as a caravan guard after the outcasts fitted her with that fucking kick-ass arm of hers. She wanted to see what's out there. Gotta admit, if you were a raider and you saw a six-foot-four bruiser like her sporting that arm, would you hit that caravan? Nah, you'd hit the next one. One of the stops on the caravan's route was here in Diamond City. They'd show maybe once a month, stay for a couple days, and move on. I was probably a tweener back then. That's the problem with being an orphan. I don't know exactly how old I am. Anyway, back then we only knew her as the mean-looking guard with the cool arm who wouldn't talk. Most of the younger girls wanted to be her back then. Total hero worship for the girl with no name image, you know? I'd follow her around the city when she was here, trying to act like her and imitate the way she walked. I know, pretty pathetic. The merchant she worked for, Fiddle, was a real cool guy. One of the most popular merchants I've ever seen. Not a wet blanket like Lucas Miller. He'd park out front and have candy for the kids when he was handing out the mail, relaying news and returning with the special request items. Then, in one of the smartest marketing maneuvers of all time, he'd whip out his fiddle and make it sing so he could dance and shit. He'd get a sizable crowd out there, and we'd turn it into a mini afternoon festival of sorts. Kind of became a tradition before long. That was the problem, though. We got predictable. Huge crowd out front, giant wide open gate into the city behind them. We were so stupid, so predictable. One of them afternoons, the gunners launched a surprise attack on the city. Started with one of them, the Vola, launched a fat man round right into the middle of the crowd from a blown out window across the street. It killed almost 30 of us in that blast, including the heads of security, fiddle, guards, women and kids. Oaks worked security. His wife and daughter were killed. But he didn't find out till it was all over, thankfully. It spared him at least some pain. It's only sheer luck that I'm alive. 
I had to go back in to get some caps I saved up because I wanted one of them lemonades he was selling. The gunners had planned on dropping that mini nuke and then waltzing right in because they charged the wide open front gate right after that. There was hardly anyone left alive out front, but Oaks and the sheriff were two of them. So the sheriff took charge. I didn't see it firsthand. I was just a little girl. But I'm told the two of them emptied all their ammo and grenades stolen the charge. They were able to turn the would-be fall of Diamond City into a day-long urban combat quagmire instead. Not a bad deal when you think about it. Long story short, the sheriff led him that day into not only beating the gunners across the river to Cambridge, but captured 30 or so of them too. <laughs> but we had no idea what to do with the ones we caught. Well, food isn't exactly in generous supply in the wasteland, you know. So, we marched him into an alleyway north of the city and kept him there that night, sitting on the ground under lots of armed guards. The next morning, the sheriff sent her famous message. Everyone tells you to talk to Oaks when you ask about it. The sheriff started that day by launching a flare to get the attention of the gunners that retreated across the river, still licking their wounds. We, and I mean the whole city, marched them gunners north up to the south shore of the river and hung them, one by one, from the lampposts. We strung him up all along the river from the amphitheater to the alley where we had kept him the night before. That run-of-the-mill alley got a new name that day. Hangman's Alley. And the sheriff wasn't nice about it, neither. This was no drop-and-snap hanging. <laughs> Not by a long shot. She used bailing wire. Didn't give them hoods, didn't tie their feet, and hoisted them up with a brahmin on the other end of the line. Slowly. Some of those fuckers took five or ten minutes to stop kicking. I'd spit when I mentioned him, but I don't spit on my floor. She made them all watch their buddies die, one by one, till it was their turn to get the run up to the top of the next lamppost. And the ones watching from across the river? Did they ever go fucking ape shit seeing their buddies die? The flare did its job. They saw everything. But there was nothing they could do about it. We beat the shit out of them. They were in no shape to stop us, much less from across the river. They had to sit there and take their medicine while we hoisted their friends as high as they could go, kicking, gagging, and bleeding out their eyes and ears. We made the bodies the gift that kept on giving by leaving them up there to rot. Time and the elements eventually took them down. To rub salt in the wound, we took the ones we killed in the firefight and slung them over the river wall for the crows and dogs to tear apart. Practically overnight, the Commonwealth heard about what Diamond City did, and the literal new sheriff in town. She hit the gunner so hard, their grandparents felt it. We haven't had a gunner attack on the city since. But what we found out today, and the cistern, and Hub City, something tells me they're dying for a rematch. Tell me more. This wasn't just about the sheriff's hatred for gunners. If you're looking to assign blame or call someone a butcher. Understand the entire city would have ripped those gunners apart limb from limb with their bare hands if given the chance. They just killed our friends. Children, neighbors, and family members. A lot of them. I mean, Oaks hasn't been the same since. Never. The gunners did something much worse than kill him that day. They killed his soul. The city needed the people that did this to hurt, and hurt bad. There was a rage in us over this. The sheriff knew it had to be answered. The only thing that kept us from becoming an ugly mob who beat him to death was the sheriff's promise of vengeance, and strategy. The city didn't just need vengeance, it also needed real security, to make sure the gunners would never even think of pulling this shit again. Through the sheriff, we got our blood and our safety. We loved it for that. And we still do. We were all there. The whole city. We all came out from behind the walls and marched to the river just to watch every one of them die. And not a single one of us looked away. Everyone who lost a friend or family member got a chance to lead that Brahmin to hoist one of those fuckers up. And we all took it, including me. It's not something we like to talk about. But we were on our own. And it was on us to do something. Nobody else was going to do what needed to be done. I mean, do you see a justice system around here? Me neither. But it provided as much closure as a lot of people were going to get that day. And that Devola creep, whose head you brought back to Oaks? As I said, he's the one who pulled the fat man trigger. 
We all knew his name. We knew who he was and what he did, even though they didn't tell you up front. Every one of us. It may have been hidden behind a typical bounty, but the FSD wanted his head worse than Oaks let on. Much worse. That's why they had you leave the brooch. This is personal. Yeah. So now you know. You know just how mean we can get when you hurt our family. And as far as messages go, it don't get more clear than that. All we got is each other. And we're loyal to each other to the bitter end, whatever it may be. Don't forget that. Now let's go report this to the sheriff. This is pretty big. Yes? Yes? We're back, Sheriff. I can see that. How's the water doing? Crenshaw returned already with the treatment. We should be operating at full capacity sometime tomorrow. Crisis averted. Crenshaw returned with the treatment. The doctor is flushing the system now to make sure all traces of the herbicide are removed. Report. What did you two find out there? This wasn't random. And they kidnapped Hewitt for his card. We were operating under that assumption, yes. That's why we sent Lily to the location. We recovered a holotape. Lily has it. Very good. We'll turn it over to Lieutenant Dan for analysis. What else? Turns out, the gunners were operating out of my friend's house. He saw most of it. We iced the gunners for him, and he was more than happy to help. So much for fact-finding. Kuda was pretty upset, Sheriff. He wasn't gonna tell us nothing until he got his house back. Part of the intel was locked up in his head. I see. So what facts did you find? We got this holotape with the CEO's journal on it. Kuda said they took Hewitt alive and were talking about working for someone else. Which, you know, I mean, gunners do. But we went through their terminal after we iced them to have a look. And this seems to be a gunner operation. I mean, nobody hired him to kidnap Hewitt. They're doing this themselves. Continue. Kuda said he was afraid to come forward because he had no backup out there. And I gotta admit, he is alone out there. It makes him a great victim. Basically, he said he'd agree to be our eyes and ears out there if the scouts stopped by and have a few beers with him on their patrol. And you gotta know, 
Kuda said whoever spiked the water here was forced under threat of having his daughter killed. So, once you do find out who it was, keep that under consideration when figuring out what to do with them. Good work. And the gunners? Oh yeah. Almost forgot about them. Duh, Lily. Uh, where were we? Oh yeah. So you'll see on this guy's journal he talks about the Vola and the gunner Crenshaw whacked in Vault 75 being officers for this operation of theirs. Turns out, the ones in the vault were tasked with kidnapping random schlubs for the Institute as a revenue stream to fund this whole thing. And the ones in my friend's house were in charge of poisoning the cistern. They succeeded and were set to leave tomorrow. So we headed back to Hub City where Devola lost his head and looked for intel, cause nobody told my sidekick he had to look for it the first time. Well, I'm glad you were smart enough to do so, Lily. Someone had been by to clean up the bodies, so that place ain't fully abandoned. They definitely took anything of value out of there, though. But they left Oaks's FSD brooch behind. Remember the calling card put on Devola's body? It was wired to blow, of course. But what was really interesting is that it was hanging from a noose, Sheriff. A noose. You know what that probably means. It would seem the gunners need to be taught a new lesson. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So what's the next step? For you, nothing. Thanks to you two, we have a significant amount of intel that needs analyzing before we can act on it. But there is a pressing matter that we could use your friend's help with. Lieutenant Dan is waiting for you in the conference area. He'll have your payment. There is also another matter we could use your help with. The lieutenant will have the details, but briefly, there's a loose end regarding the Gunner Institute link you uncovered. We'd like to fix it. Yes. Yeah. Hey. Lily's sidekick. Here's your payment. You should get some rest first, then come see me about an important mission related to your Vault 75 intel. Can I assume you're ready for your mission now? Why me? If this mission fails, there's a chance it will be because you were taken by the Gunners to the Institute for Memory Extraction. Your unfamiliarity with our department means we've got less to lose if the mission goes south. I'm ready. What's the plan? The holotape of the gunner lieutenant you killed in Vault 75 contained many encrypted journal entries, as well as the ones you read. This Lieutenant O'Brien was overseeing a running kidnapping contract for the Institute to raise revenue for an as-of-yet undetermined purpose. His company would kidnap as directed by the Institute, deliver their objective, and collect their substantial payment. He was under explicit orders from his commanding officer not to kidnap from Diamond City, our organization, or anyone under our protection. While that raises questions about what purpose they needed so many caps for, that is not why you're here. The only reason we know of this operation at all is because Lieutenant O'Brien got greedy, disobeyed orders, and took a contract to kidnap Lily. Fucking typical. Only two things you can count on in this world. Gunners being greedy, and the shit hitting the fan I'm holding. We'd call it a lucky break, but that ignores what Lily's been through. Nevertheless, it was not the only outside contract the lieutenant took. 
The lieutenant set out a squad with the goal of kidnapping either Dr. McClintock or Mr. Dr. Pepper as targets of opportunity. The squad has been operating independently and is unaware that O'Brien's company was liquidated by Crenshaw and yourself. Neither Dr. McClintock nor Mr. Dr. Pepper leave the city very often, or regularly. When they do, they book passage with a caravan for safety. This necessitates the gunners setting up a spotter to monitor the entrance to Diamond City to give their squad advance notice. Lieutenant Harkins has found that spotter, sitting in a building south of the front gate to the city, not far from Hardware Town. We don't want the spotter, though. We want the whole squad. So we're laying a trap, and you're the bait. That makes this particularly dangerous. Great. So what do you need me to do? You're going to pretend to be Mr. Dr. Pepper. He's waiting for you in his room. He's been briefed and will have a set of clothes for you to wear. Put them on. You then meet Carla at the front gate. We've booked passage for you with her caravan to Abernathy Farm and told her to make it known. You will proceed with Carla to the outskirts of the Fens to ensure the gunner spotter sees you dressed as Mr. Dr. Pepper leaving the city. Once you're outside the Fens, you'll break off from Carla for her protection and proceed to Abernathy Farm on roads by way of Walden Pond. The gunners will know your destination and are likely to kidnap you close to Abernathy because they can predict you will be near there eventually. Lieutenant Crenshaw, his scouts, and some snipers will be following you from a distance behind in anticipation of the kidnapping attempt. Your job is to draw out the gunner kidnapping squad and keep them busy until Lieutenant Crenshaw and his men can arrive. Lieutenant Crenshaw may have more orders from there which are need to know depending on mission status. Obey them and you will be paid handsomely. Sierra. There you are, General. I kind of had this feeling it'd be you when I heard Lily had a new sidekick. Glad you took a job offer. Let's hope you don't become feral child like the last one. Anyway, Lieutenant Dan stopped by earlier and told me you're going to be needing a set of my clothes and a hat. Guess you're playing me for a little bit, huh? I already heard from Bob about how the Gunners have a contract on bringing the two of us to the Institute alive. I've got to assume they want to do the same thing to us they did to Lily. What the fuck is up with that? I don't know nothing about that place. That's the plan. You're a wanted man. Hey, playing me is easy. You just gotta give out shitty medical advice and try to sell them new Coca-Cola. That's top secret. Cute. Have it your way, asshole. Don't worry. Easy for you to say. You're a walking arsenal of insecurity and overcompensation. I'm not so handy at a fight, and I never pretended to be. But, I'm not worried as long as I stay behind the wall here, which I can do for a couple of weeks. I'm glad they're doing something about this right away all the same. We'll take care of those gunners for you. I don't doubt that. I don't know how handy you are with gunners, but the FSD? They're real good at killing gunners. Real good. You'll see. The worst part is I don't know nothing about how the FSD operates, but the gunners don't know that. If they got me, they torture me to death trying to get the info I don't have in the first place. Bob, however, between you and me, if Dan's the sheriff's right hand, Bob's her brain. She knows their operations inside and out. She ain't got no official rank, but even the lieutenants do what she tells them. She gets caught. And the Institute might as well have an open book on damn near everything that goes on in that place. What's worse, they'd have Bob. And, you know, I can barely stand losing Lily. Aww, DP. I'd give you a hug, but I'd crush you in this power armor. You're the best. No, I mean it. I'm not a complete fool. Just 95% fool. I know you all see how I feel about Bob. I, I love her. And even if she's still trying to make up her mind about me, that doesn't change anything for me. Whatever the sheriff has planned, I know it's not over tonight. She don't play the short game, but tonight is where you make sure Bob is safe. And you've got my personal gratitude for that. 
Stop by the shop sometime after it's over for some free lunch and as much Nuka-Cola as you can carry, okay? Thanks. I will. DP and Bab, sitting in a tree. Free advice? You ever got a medical issue? Go to Gary. He's the real deal. Training and all. Surgery center is just a bunch of butchers. Hey there. Huh? Yes? Huh? I'm glad you made it in time. Nice costume? <laughs> Is it Halloween already? Well, hey there, pup. Hey, Aunt Carla. Carla's the one who found me and brought me to Diamond City when my parents were killed on the road all those years ago. I'm ready to help with whatever you need. Just say the word. I have some questions. Yeah? I'm thinking no. Now, if you don't have anything else... Good to be working with you. Whatever you say. Time is paying off. Careful. Ain't nobody washing their hands after taking a leak these days. Or using toilet paper. Or doing laundry.
Okay. I'm going. I'm going. Jerk. Good luck. Let's hope you won't need it. <clears throat> I'm glad you made it in time. Nice costume? <laughs> Is it Halloween already? Well, hey there, pup. Hey, Aunt Carla. Carla's the one... I'm ready to... Good to be working with you. Whatever you say. Good luck. Let's hope you won't need it. Ever wonder what sort of flesh-eating bacteria grows in the pockets of pants that haven't been washed in Let's two centuries? Let's do this. Still in one piece. If that's what you
that? <laughs> it's a really funny looking ghoul. Just where have you been keeping that screwdriver? Uh, you think maybe they keisted something? Why don't you slap on a rubber glove and check? That's why you don't screw with the gunners.
Hi. You've done a heck of a job, Sentinel. Ad Victorium. Nice. Hold up there, traveler. All right, that's far enough, you soda-pushing pansy. We got guns on you. There's more of us than there are of you, so if you want to stay alive, you'll just do what we tell you. Now, nice and easy, drop whatever cute settler pipe pistol you got, then put your hands up. Wow, it sure is hot out. I could use a nice, refreshing Nuka-Cola. How about you? Uh, no. Hi there. You guys want to buy any refreshing Nuka-Cola? You got a one-track mind, don't you? Man, don't you just hate them? I only had it once. Ain't that bad. A little fishy tasting, maybe. Have you tried our new Green Gunner Extreme Nuka Mix? Gunner Green? Ooh. No, you got any? Hey, uh, Sarge, you sure this is our guy? This don't look like the guy in the picture. Actually, uh, this don't look like a guy at all. Back in line, Corporal. Sure, what the fuck do I know? I'm only the guy who didn't take a flamethrower to the eyes last year. Excuse me, Corporal. Care to repeat that? I'm just saying, sir, that, that due to the nature and severity of your injuries... Just what are you suggesting, Corporal? I'm suggesting, sir that the same person who was mistaken our bent lamp post for our assault drum might not be the best at deciding if this is our mark. You are out of line, Corporal. This is your last warning. Nah, I'm serious, sir. I'm pretty sure this ain't the guy in the pick. I mean... This is about the guacamole at the Christmas party, isn't it? What? No, no, I don't... I don't care about that. It's just, this ain't the... Admit it, I didn't like your shitty guacamole and you'll never get over it. Hey, that's not fair. I, I told you I worked all day on that. Ha! Ah, I knew it! Then I got the Jingles pajamas and Razor scooter you wanted at the White Elephant Secret Santa. 
You're holding a grudge from the Christmas party. It pisses you off every time I wheel down the hallways of the vault. Admit it! God damn it, Saj. This is not our guy. Who the hell else wears these ridiculous clothes? You see that? Even I can see that. <sighs> yes, I see the jacket, the jeans, the hat, but it's not him in the... Uh, wait. If it's not him in there... Ah, oh, fuck! Grenade! You're dead! <laughs> Maybe they're still here. Watching us. Laughing. It's over. Good work. At least everything's gone to plan so far. So far? We got more work to do. The CEO of this ham-handed ambush has a transponder. Grab it and head to the cabin southeast of here. We've secured an old bunker underneath the cabin accessible through a hatch. Meet us there and we'll move to the next part of the operation. You know what? Since we talked, I'm feeling swell. Look at the two of us here in Sanctuary. Prepared for the future. I'll hand it to you. This place isn't awful. It's just a lot of cold. But it could be for I'm afraid I'm not much use in a fight. Anymore. used to call me Murphy the Mad Woman. Move it. My lily sense is tingling and I don't want... <clears throat> okay, now for the hard part. Let me get that transponder and we'll get to work. Why did I have to do this? 
You don't know much about this operation. If you got caught, our security operations will still be mostly intact. That's still true. So, in other words, no questions. It's for your own good. What are you going to do with it? And you're about to find out. Now hand it over. No, I'm keeping it. We need that transponder. You're not leaving the basement with it. Hand it over. I'm not gonna ask you again. Free advice? You really want to give that to Crenshaw right now. Don't ruin a good thing. Listen to the Lieutenant, Merck. I told you I'm keeping it. Have it your way. Good. I told you I'm... Have it your I told you. Have it. Right. You're dead. Here you go. Excellent work. You've been a good investment for the department so far. All right, deputies, listen up. This is the moment we've been waiting for. You all know what you're supposed to do. We got no idea how long it's gonna take for them to show up once we send the signal. Could be right away, could be a few minutes, so stay tight. As we said in the briefing, timing is critical. I will only activate the jammer once the EMP is fired, otherwise it'll fry the jammer too. Remember that. I'd rather turn on the jammer late than not turn it on at all. Otherwise, we'd be in a whole shitload of trouble. And so would our families. Remember who we fight for, everyone. Now, let's do this. Ready, Linda? Standing by, Lieutenant. All right, deputies. Charges armed, jammer armed. Stand by while we place a call in three. Remember to wait for them. Three, two, one. It's about time you contacted us. We can't wait. What the? Motherfucker. Pop the EMP! Jammer up! Linda, go! Ah, D-115! Commence emergency relay! D-115! Commence emergency relay! Problems, friend? D-115! Commence emergency relay! Yeah... Ain't happening, pal. Tell you what, though. I got someone who wants to talk to you if your boys back at home don't like you no more. D-115, requesting emergency relay. Immediately. You one of those brain-damaged scents? You would do best to release me. Immediately. Actually, the way I see it, with that knee, we're your only hope. Otherwise, some beastie's gonna roll through here and make short work out of the meat wrapped around that fucked up digital brain. My life is inconsequential compared to the Institute's plans. Plans? <laughs> oh, is that what you call them? Plans? And make no mistake, you ain't alive, buddy. Now about that person who wants to talk to you. Okay, guys, get that thing in these irons. Make sure that jammer stays close to it and on, Sarge. Holy shit, Crenshaw. Did we just take a courser alive? You had nothing to do with this, Lily. The sheriff finds out I'll let you in on this, and all of our asses are in a sling. All of us. Remember that. Ooh, dibs on any 
lighters are watching. <clears throat> Luna likes to Lily's friend. Hey there. You need something? So it yourself. You had nothing to do with this, Lily. The sheriff finds out I'll let you in on this, and all of our asses are in a sling. All of us. Remember that. Same here, kid. Keep that mouth zipped. Hey, anything you need, you just take care of it yourself. Hey, ever thought about crafting a time machine to go back 210 years? Excuse me. One last task for you. We're taking this to our safe house east of Ten Pines. We need you to go clear it out for us. Make sure no one sees us coming. Normally, it's empty. But sometimes assholes move in if we haven't used it in a while. I need you to double check and clear it if it's infested. What are you going to do with him? We're gonna mind our own damn business. That's what we're gonna do. Man, you fucked his shit up. Ah, it's still good. We'll rub some dirt in that knee. It'll be as good as a new toaster. One house cleaning, coming right up. Excellent. We'll wait a little bit to give you time to work and meet you there with it not long from now. Time for a bit of fun, is it? 